35 days ago, I abandoned 12 ordinary Brits on a remote Pacific island. This is hell. With just the clothes on their back and a few basic tools. Get up, camp. There's a big... Get a fire going. Go find some money. This year, there was £100,000 waiting to be discovered. I found money! Yeah, baby! How many opportunities do you get to run around an island like a little kid and find boxes of money? What's that in that tree over there? Wonga. Would they be able to find and keep this life-changing sum? Yes! <laughs> it's a game, this. Anything goes here. Doggy dog, every man for himself, you know. Facing constant hunger. I just feel hungry and thirsty. <laughs> yes, get it! I'm literally dreaming of food. <laughs> and the hostile tropical environment. <laughs> Can't hold on. No, <laughs> Who would have the skills to survive? <laughs> Tonight, I return to the island to discover the secrets they use to stay alive. Stop it, stop it, stop it! We need to survive, then it was my job to go out there and kill. <laughs> what pushed them to breaking point? Oh. I just thought, I'm not going to get through this. I hate it! And what impact the cash had on their survival. It's like possess. It's a bit of money. It's like. <laughs> there's always haves and there's always the have nots. It's more fun if there's a little bit of shenanigans going on. Friendship is worth more than money. We want all of it. Welcome to the jungle. So I'm on my way to pick up the remaining 11 castaways, and this has been an extraordinary month of twists and turns. All I've done is put the money on there. What they do with it was down to them. Yeah! Yeah! Actually, this moment I've been waiting for for so long. Yeah! In this series, a cross-section of British society, from nurses to lords, brain surgeons to plumbers, were left to fend for themselves. And I tell you what, you're the heroes around here. You are the heroes. 35 days. And 11 of you left. Yes! Pretty impressive. Right, come on, let's go and have a look at your camp. OK, so this is, this is your camp. This is also where you slept. Yeah. Which you could argue after 35 days is still a hobo camp. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Did anyone even try a bed, though? Yeah. At the old camp, we did, yeah. I built a bed a metre high. I was still waking up damp and cold. I think the beds would have been redundant, if, if truth be known. I think calling it a hobo camp was uh, putting it mildly. <laughs> I'd call it a bit of a shithole. <laughs> I'm the builder here, so I should be able to build something. Try frame beds. If I can't do that, I'm going to jack into the game, you know what I mean? <laughs> Jim, come on, man, you could build stuff. But Jim took the view there was no point in sorting a camp out. This is just the boring ladies doing boring housework stuff. Just to get rid of some of the squalor. Before you have your guests arriving, there was a whole host of reasons why our camp was as shitty as it was, um, but it was home. <laughs> Who created sandflies, man? Them sandflies tortured my life the whole time I was there. Ah! Oh! I mean, I must have 50 or 60 brand new bikes in the back of my right hand. God sakes, these things are murder. I'm covered in boils from those bastard sandflies, and they're not relenting, they're just getting worse and worse and worse. You just sat there minding your own business when bop, you got a bite, bop, you got another bite, bop, you got another bite. So I just gave up with the sandflies and I just let them eat me. I just don't know what they want from me. <laughs> it's like they're so small, but why aren't they scared of me? I'm massive. I could build a bed here. I'm next to the fire. I'm off the ground. I'm away from the sand flies. But all I say is it's still a hobo camp. <laughs> and after 35 days, it's a kind of poor effort on the <laughs> camp front. I would have probably said that if there had not been money on the island, maybe more time would have been spent on infrastructure. 
over 35 days, the islanders all had the chance to search for the £100,000 dropped in cash boxes around the island. So what was your feeling when you first saw that first helicopter and a little parachute dropping out? Here comes trouble. Here comes <laughs> trouble, that's right. Do you feel overall this, it was a good thing? Yeah, it made it more interesting. Oh, my God, we're here and there's a box hanging from the tree. Ah! Oh, I can't just explain the emotional rush that I had from it. Now let go. Yeah, baby! Working out what to do with the money when they found it, the islanders had to quickly devise a strategy. As soon as that first box was in front of me, it felt like we just robbed the bank and got away with it. It kind of felt like a game. We'd had a sort of vague discussion. We would share it all, but nothing was actually set in concrete. Right, we're splitting this. If we aim for getting one box a day, we'll be OK. Yeah. <laughs> Game on, like, yeah, bring on the rest. Oh, my God, he's crazy. He's like a crazed man. Like, <laughs> possessed. It's a bit of money, he's like... <laughs> <sighs> it kind of reawoke the whole competitive spirit in me. I want it to be part of that. You know, that little adventure of, of tearing down those parachutes. You're excited, aren't you? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Looking back on it was by far the most sensible thing to do because it's more fun if there's a little bit of shenanigans going on. Holy fuck. What? There's a box. Not as enough. No, just kidding. Uh, Fucking uh, dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> and after all, it is a game, isn't it? He's a league of his own. I can't compete with that guy. He's been six years in the Marines. I'm just seven years in the NHS. Not everyone's strategy was to keep the money they found for themselves. Some of the islanders wanted to share it. In particular, Marco's athletic rival, plumber Jack. The main reason I wanted to get the money, I think it was pride. Fuck, he's getting in, he's getting in. I'm very competitive. I love Ben to bits, but I probably had the worst person that I could ask for in the boat with me. Ben was rowing the wrong way. Ben, you're going back to shore the other way, mate. <laughs> Marco's not, not stronger and not, not fitter than me in any way. Come on, let's go, Ben. If you don't want to play a game, let's play. <laughs> well, I'm not getting any. Of course you're not getting any. Come on! So, Marco, do you have any regrets how it's worked out, the money side of it? But I came here with two different mindsets. One was towards the money and one was towards the group and the survival. If people wanted more money, they were welcome to go out on their own or in groups and do as they pleased. Well, you were very lucky. You had the choice to be able to go out and do that. Yeah. Right from the start, that wasn't going to happen with Morgan and I. We didn't feel good about it, but it was a physical age thing. It wasn't because we didn't want to do it. We were unable to do it. Get in! They found some money! Well, how much? Fifteen. Fifteen? Oh, my God. Well done! When they came back into the camp, having found money, if they said that they'd found money, the enthusiasm and the feel that pleasure and excitement was great. I wanted to feel that. I thought I was going to have nothing. I'd have gone into their bag and stole a couple of thousand of each because I wasn't getting money. And it was a game. I kept saying to Morgan, it's a game. I'll steal. <laughs> I mean it. <laughs> I would have stole it. I honest to God would have done that. Irene is a dark horse, I'm telling you. If, she, if Irene was my age, you know, she probably would have been more, you know, cutthroat than I was. Um, yeah, she would have ripped that place apart, no doubt. I wish they'd known it was in their bags. They must have left these bags in camp and I'd be in camp. I was so near it and didn't get it. But on the island, there was one thing more valuable than money. And do you remember your first taste of island water? Yes. Oh, what was it, Marco? He said it was like a cold week, so you wasn't it? But we knew we'd survive then. By that stage, you're, you're thirsty anyway. Yeah. This is like 
beautiful nectar to yeah. you guys. Yeah. <laughs> Can I have a little sip? Yeah, oh, yeah. Nice. I have a drink. Well, survival water is not going to taste good, <laughs> is it? Yeah. But one of the joys for you guys when you get back to civilization is just how good that tap is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I can't wait. I don't think I'll ever buy bottled water again. Oh, that's disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. I think I'd rather not drink. God. Even with the threat of dehydration, one islander couldn't bring herself to drink the survival water. I've never had to drink brown coloured water in my life. And it just tastes like soil. I think I expected like this camping trip and I've, I've never been camping, but it was nothing like that. <laughs> I'm seriously wondering why I've decided to go on this show. She's already said, what the fuck am I doing? Seriously, with those fingernails? Yeah, a bit gross now, but it's my little bit of sass. It literally took minutes into it, and I thought, wow, you know, I, d I don't know what I've come to. Within a day, Ruby was already struggling to adapt to island life. Ruby, um, would you like me drinking water? No, thanks. Oh, Ruby, no, 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 you'll damage yourself. I don't like it. I hated it, but I got used to it. I know, but I can't drink it. It's a million times, billion times harder than you could have ever imagined. It's horrendous. Ruby to zero, over. On day five, Ruby called my safety team and quit the island. Ready? Are you sure? This is literally like running a marathon and giving up after a couple of miles and going, oh, I can't do it. I think I should have at least spent a night in garden or something because I weren't ready for it. She enjoyed the idea of this um, experiment, but the reality of it's completely different. I'm upset I let myself down because I've never quitted on anything before. Even in little things in life, I've never quit on it. I've always seen it through. So I'll never regret going on there but bloody hell was it difficult. Lethargy and laziness is always going to be the killer for a, a survivor. What's kept you going? If there wasn't the money element, I guarantee that hardly anyone would have got out of camp. But when we did get out of camp, we came across food sources, we foraged for things, and that really then boosted our survival, and it really did work hand in hand together. Yeah, so that actually is a really strong positive of the money is that it drove you, drove you on. Has everyone got a full water bottle on them? Yeah. Let's go. Hi ho, hi ho. Bye guys. Bye guys. Bye. This year, a hundred thousand pounds was dropped at various locations around the island. As a result, the group covered more ground than ever before. I'd be out there trying to kind of find the money, because in finding money, you found things. I wanted to get everything from this island I possibly could, and I found vomit fruit. Did you even find pineapple? Yes, we have no <laughs> bananas. How are my pineapples? I think we counted as 21 different, like, sources of food, whether it be from a jobo berry to oysters, like lobster, like even sugar cane, which can I just say is amazing. Stingray would definitely leave that if that was on a menu again. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be putting that in my mouth. Limpets are nice. Winkles are a little bit, are a little bit shitty. Just like a slug in your mouth. When it came to food, it was 24-year-old plumber Jack who proved himself to be the ultimate survivalist. So I'd wake up in the morning grumpy, hungry, and I think, what am I going to kill? What am I getting for dinner today? Ah! If it walked, swam, flew, talked, squawked, he killed it. Oh, my God! There's a fucking fish! <laughs> we wouldn't be going out to get food, but he'd just, you know, spot something, grab it by the neck, and it would be dead within five minutes, and you wouldn't even blink. If there was a stingray, woof, he was there. If there was a bird, whoa, there with a rock. You know, he was quick, nimble. Talk me through what you killed. About four iguanas. Ah! 
five birds, two stingrays, four fish, no, goat. Just wanted to bring it back and give it out and put a smile on everyone's faces. Jack is one of these people that he's just giving, 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 giving. Suck them out, suck them out. Put it to your mouth, the whole thing. Put it to your mouth and suck it out. He genuinely just loves everyone. <laughs> Come here. <laughs> He's just pure innocence. What would you say has been your one key skill in being such an effective hunter? It's just, I never gave up. You were opportunistic, you know, you wouldn't sort of wait for it all to happen and to be perfect. You'd, you'd sniff an opportunity and you'd go for it and do it. Well done. Thank you, thank you. Ivor's underpants. How revolting, look at that. Ew. Quickly adapting to your environment is a key part of any survival situation. Funky smell around this camp, isn't it? And not much is more important than maintaining good personal hygiene. The hygiene on the island was disgusting. Look down, you filthy. I loved it. God, those were the days. Yep, thanks. But there was an additional issue for the female islanders. I could get cranky. Jesus. Well, you've already been cranky sometimes. Yeah, well, I am. Well, I've been on my period. I've been on my period. Yeah, well, right, we'll let you off. I just felt so dirty. I felt like a dirty woman, and I could not do anything about it. I have a right to complain right now because not only is it uncomfortable, it makes me bloated, sluggish, fatigued. I I just feel like I'm a victim here, and I need everyone to know it. You decide to go cli like climbing through the jungle, and then you've just got these like stomach cramp. That was not a good part of it. Like, being female is actually super difficult, can I just say. When it came to skin care, one islander used their ingenuity and tried to be resourceful. We didn't have a lot on the island, but we did have the bare minerals, including tampons. So I would dip it in my water bottle, and then what I would do was just go over the face, just to get, oh, just to get that first layer of grime off, but what I didn't know was that it was also stripping away natural oils that were protecting my skin from the sun. And as I'm going over, I can feel bits flaking, so with that, I'm sitting there and I'm feeling like, oh, it's like a scab and like an itch you can't help. My skin, my poor, poor skin. I was so concerned about her picking her face, yeah? I've been telling her off every day, going, stop picking your face, you know? You, you're bleeding now, like your lip is split. And I knew it was also serious when people started hiding the tampons from me. Uh, Emily is a lady who likes beauty products normally. Oh, God, I know. Uh, well, I, listen, hey, we all have our stuff. But using tampons to really try and clean your face and stuff... Bad idea. If anything, your skin knows what it's doing. You've got to put trust in your skin. It's funny, once you get a layer of grime and dirt and a bit of coconut fat and just smoke, and it actually gives you protection. But hey, can we learn by our mistakes? And I would never criticise you for mistakes because those mistakes you've had to live with has made your existence here much harder. Oh, what have we got here, boy? Oh, oh my God, that is delicious! Yeah. The islanders may have been stranded 5,000 miles from home, but reminders of the modern world and its impact on the environment were ever present. So tell me about the rubbish. Did you see a lot of rubbish all the time? The rubbish is unbelievable, but it has helped us in a lot of ways. We'd had this old bit of tin that we found. Oh, that might be good for cooking. Which became our frying pan and saucepan and everything. Toothbrushes that have been washed up. I found a toothbrush, which is keeping my pearly whites beautiful. And I'd make um, a charcoal paste and then offer it around to everybody, but people were just, like, turning their nose up at it. I'm just not ready to use a toothbrush like that. You need to get a grip. We found, like, a tarpaulin, which people were sleeping on. Cat found a blanket. Everyone was so just. I knew deep down. 
you wanted my beach towel. Well, Ag, you'll never guess what I found. Look, that's like that sweet plum it's stuff you put on with Chinese food. Whoa. Where the hell did you find that? Irene. She would be just constantly finding stuff. Surprise, surprise, more beans. Oh, my God. She just found shit wherever she went, you know? Drop it on the beach, you'll find it. We knew that there would be sort of plastic bottles and you hear about all the pollution of the plastic, but even we were shocked at what we found. Guys, I'm pretty sure this is some sort of vodka. Yeah, that. I'm telling Come you. Look. That's being saved for the birthday party. We're doing shots, yeah? Yeah. It's paint stripper. <laughs> I don't care what anyone says, it's vodka, and we're having it for the party. <laughs> So what about going to the loo? Where did all that happen? See? In a survival situation, good toilet etiquette is essential for maintaining a unified camp. Where I'm sitting right now absolutely reeks. People are just defecating everywhere and anywhere. Ben! Yeah? Where are you, mate? I'm having a shit over here. There's no such thing as paradise without a toilet system. Put it that way. Oh, Jack. Yeah. She's got a massive shit where he is He's now. He's subtle, you want, mate. You want his shit? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to go and have some me time. Good for you. Well, I'm going to do a poo, really. Look at this. Has someone pooed in here? Seriously. Hey, what is wrong with people? Someone had gone for a shit not too far away from camp. But, uh, really? And what about the phantom pooer? Oh, yeah. It's phantom pooer. Ben's looking a little guilty. Yeah. Yeah, he's looking family. It's, it's some, it, was, it's basically, <laughs> it was basically when it was late at night, so I just wanted to go get the business done. It was me! <laughs> <laughs> how, to, how to win friends and influence people in a small camp where hygiene really makes a difference. Ben was guilty of poor toilet protocol, but it wasn't his only survival skill that was lacking. I thought he was a kind of bit of a dickhead. Are you drinking your own piss? Why, there's enough coconuts, why are you drinking we? To be honest with you, I thought I was going to jump off the boat, fuck off and conquer the world myself. Ben was one of the most clueless people I have ever met in my life. He just looked odd. He carried himself slightly weirdly. Oh, my God. What? <laughs> Help me, Ben! Mark, I'm going to join your search party today. Mate, we don't need four people. Mentally, I just don't want to stay in camp. Rather not like, I don't think he's as capable or as good as the other guys. Like, he just floats around. So, yeah, I'm just going to get on with it. He wanted to go and do stuff, but had no concept or clue of how to do so. For all the bravado, all of who he was, he was never going to survive. Ah. Oh, fucking hell. Uh, I'm exhausted. I don't know, I can think of this. Nando's. I went there for the money. I never went there for anything else. I would rather walk off this island with 15 grand. When you're there, you're starving, hungry, thirsty, and drinking your own piss, your plan changes uh, and you adapt and you know, mine certainly did. Yes! Yes! Yes, Ben! Well done. Over time, the island unexpectedly turned Ben from salesman to survivalist. I just lost interest in the money, and that was, that was a change in me, that. I kind of started to embrace the experience. That's when I really started to enjoy myself. He looks injured, doesn't he? I love Ben to bits. He come on there, a knob, and just he, he just got better and better, and he's such a nice guy. Ben! 
Ben, yes! <sighs> yes! <sighs> ben! <sighs> Good! As relationships grew in camp, I wanted people who were less capable of going in the jungle to walk away with what they wanted to walk away with. Oh, my God. Money! I found money! I found the box! It was really nice to see Ben's, like, transformation, really. You know, he was like this ugly caterpillar at the beginning, a little, little bastard who'd get under your skin, and, you know, he completely did a 180 on that. My boobs were bigger last time. Right, another day done and dusted. Time to get ready for bed. My favourite time of the day. Surviving the island meant dealing with the hostile environment 24-7. Every night, the camp had 12 hours of total darkness without any of the distractions of modern living. I loved my nights. My nights were the best part of my day. So I love routine and structure. So overnight, as soon as it started getting dark, coat goes on, pulleys go down, comes over the face, um, bikini bottoms over my face, socks on the hands so the sand flies don't bite. And it used to be like, ding, another day done. Woo! The most difficult thing for me were the nights, I think, because they were very long. You're just twiddling your thumbs and looking up at the stars and thinking about things. At home, I never dream. Here, you have really weird dreams. I've had one dream since I've been here, about buying a, a truck, and it was way too small. Like, it, it turned out to be like a, a matchbox truck. What the hell? I've had dreams about being chased around by a 97-year-old woman with a syringe full of potassium trying to kill me. These are the dreams I'm having. To get through the long, cold nights, the campmates devised their own coping methods. I was like Chief Spooner. I could, every time one of them was shivering, I'd go to them, I'd, cut, I'd give them a spoon, and then the other one would do the same. I'd turn around, give them a spoon. I was a spooning slag last night. <laughs> a spooning slag, I love that. <laughs> I had a lovely spoon last night with Irene, uh, which was one of the best moments of my life. Probably enjoyed that. Come here, Irene. What is it, my darling? Would you give me a cuddle? Lucky. Honestly, if Irene had been, you know, uh, maybe 30 years younger, uh, then, you know, something may have happened. <laughs> Do you know you were the last thing on my mind last night? Was it? And the first thing on my mind this morning. But she's a saucy one, that Irene, a proper saucy one. <laughs> you haven't met James before? One islander coped with the hardships of island life by being resourceful and creating his own personal companion. So, Ivy, you bring your coconut with you. James comes everywhere. James? He's called James, uh -huh. yeah. Do you give him a kiss at night? No, I'm not that desperate to kiss a nut yet. <laughs> you spend a lot of time not only talking to your campmates, but someone else. Well, yeah, I, I recently got married to a bloke, and uh, he's called James, and I thought it'd be rather fun to have a, a sort of Wilson look-alike, and I asked him what his opinions were, and he told me, quite frankly, what <laughs> he thought I wanted to know. Was the coconut more compliant than the real James? Uh -huh. Yes, I have to say. <laughs> Everybody is thinking about their loved ones at home, and in particular, I'm thinking about Jimmy here and how he's coping without me. Hope he hasn't cut his arm off. Have you cut your arm off? Probably not. Who's better looking? <laughs> when I went on the island and he said, will you miss me? Me being me, he said, probably not. And he said, what do you mean? And I said, well, you know, I'll be far too busy trying to survive. Jimmy, who would you eat? Who was your number one first? He doesn't want to say. But actually, you know, I did miss him, and so I thought this would be a rather sort of fun way to show that uh, he was still in my thoughts. I might have to eat you soon. Anyway. Maintaining a healthy body as well as a healthy mind are essential in a survival situation. Permanently on call were the two medics, nurse Cat and brain surgeon Mano. 
people had ailments. I'm aching, I'm this or I'm that. I've dislocated my knee. You never dislocated your knee. But I realized really quickly that myself and Kat were awful. I mean, our bedside manner. It's infected, you know. I'll tell you if it's infected. My pus is coming out of it. Just squeeze it out, squeeze the pus out, squeeze it out. Just keep on squeezing it out and it'll be fine. Me and Mana are kind of similar where we don't have too much sympathy for the minor ailments. He's a brain surgeon and I was working in intensive care, so we're used to, you know, really critically ill people. That's it, it's just so, like a so. spot. That's all you got to think about, it's like a spot. Yes, people did things that were a little bit silly. Oh, man, I am such an idiot. Uh, you poisoned yourself and now comes the getting rid of it all, so that's why well, let this all... He hasn't got a good bedside manner. It's because most of his patients are bloody comatose, aren't they? I mean, their brains removed. He was like, look, Mo, you know, you're being hysterical. You're going to be ill, you're going to be sick, you know, blah, 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 you've just got to get through it. Probably said exactly the right thing to me, actually, because I probably was being hysterical and, you know, not being a good patient, so... Despite being a leading brain surgeon, there was one islander who wasn't 100% convinced by Mano's surgical skills. I stepped on a sea urchin. That was a nightmare. I was in so much pain. Oh, fucking kill him. Man. It hurt, but that's what happens. Jack is hilarious. He had a severe lack of trust in, in me as a medic. He oh. don't know what he's fucking doing. He don't know what he's doing. Mano's a tough doctor, isn't he? He doesn't believe in any gentle stuff. Jack's a strong guy, he's a boxer. He can lift, he can carry, he can carry us, he can do so much. But he's like that lion with the little thorn that goes into his paw. It completely snookers him. Do you want to hold my hand? <laughs> hey, let me have another look if I can. <laughs> Make over it. I treated Jack like a brother when I was first there. And in the latter days, I treated him like my nine-year-old son. I'll be like, Jack, yeah, bro, how's it going? No, 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 no. Jack, get over here. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna have to do this to you. Get your foot on here now and shut up, <laughs> okay? When he started telling me off, then I'd actually I'd listen. Careful, yeah. No, boy, boy, listen to me. Yes, doctor. Other side. Put that round the other side. You're the reason why women live longer than men. You're not gonna listen to me. All right, but... Dad. <laughs> me confiscated my machete. <laughs> I can't say anything, you know? He placed me in a slightly fatherly role. I think he needed that. Irene, how old are you? 75. 75, the oldest person we've ever had on the island, and you are an inspiration. Thank you. She may have been the oldest castaway to have ever appeared on the island, but Irene was determined to prove she was a valuable asset to the group. But I won't keep the fire going until we get that fish cooked, eh? You're a star. Irene, you are a star. She survived something that most people would not be able to survive. Do I think she's weak? No, I don't. Do I think there's a craftiness to her? Absolutely. Go on, Irene. Right. Go on, Irene, get it. Don't let it go, Irene. No, 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 no. Grab it. <laughs> you got it. Nope. You got it. Look at his legs. I'm very capable. And they kind of underestimate me. Right, you little brute. She was a real good huntress. Killer instinct. No crab is safe around here. And I would be kind of like a grumpy teenager behind her. Just going, oh, I'm so tired, I'm so hungry, I'm so hot. It absolutely kicked me up the arse. I'm the killer granny. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought she'd get through it, to be honest. But, my God, she was so stoic and resilient. She was brilliant, yeah. My friends will be so proud of me doing this to eat me. Come on. Clean out as well, like, that, that's the, the bit that you would actually eat. There's some big ones here, more of them. Bless Mo and Irene, every night, every night, they were making a nice little bit of, like, broth. It went well, it's good. That's quite nice. I just wonder if I should add to them. You probably don't notice it, but I would say right here is the heart of all of your success. 
It's not the glamorous stuff. It's not the, I'm coming back with a huge kill. But it's that base level that sets your day up at 20% so you're not starting from minus 20%. So well done, Irene. Having built a camp, made fire and found food and water, the islanders could think about satisfying other human instincts. Do you think you'll find love on the island, Jim? Love on the island? Yeah. Fuck me, I couldn't raise a smile, let alone an island on that moment. <laughs> Jesus. I didn't even get horny once. I was a bit worried. Fifth, sixth week in, I was thinking, what's going on here? My dick's about that big. Oh, I mean. This is the weirdest sex position I've ever had in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I had one bone the whole time I was on there. What's the first thing you're going to do when you get home? Because I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to lie down on my bed and just going to tog away for fucking hours on end. <laughs> <laughs> it never even crossed my mind. I think I had a bit of morning glory a couple of times, but that was about as far as it went. Here's a little sneak peek of what, what I used to look like. Bit of soft porn for you. I don't think there was much libido. I was dead on the inside. I have not had one sexual thought since I've got here. I feel so disgusting. But despite the conditions, one islander was still able to get Irene's pulse racing. Wow, he's a hunk. He's absolutely beautiful. He's probably going to put his white see-through underpants so he can all see the fruits of his loins one more time. Oh, my God, those boxes. What the hell were they all about? Why? Why would you choose to wear these kind of groin-hugging sort of boxers that showed every kind of nuance of any sort of form. I don't know what was running through my head. Why white? I remember buying two pairs of uh, shorts to take with me, and I don't know why I picked the white pair. I didn't think these are going to get dirty. I didn't even think about wearing them. I just bought them. Why I chose to put the white ones on over the grey ones, I don't know. Um, <laughs> maybe part of me wanted to show more. You know, I don't know. I literally know what Marco's penis shape looks like. Ball strangling him as well. And you can just see everything in them all the time. I didn't know where to look. <laughs> they were constantly wet. So he'd stand by the fire and everyone else would be sitting down. So you just have his penis would be like there. Some people would be quite happy about this, but me. <laughs> Irene. After 35 days, I've returned to the island to take the castaways back to civilization. From what I see from a macro view coming on, you have been an incredibly efficient group of survivors. You know, you're not dying in front of my eyes like sometimes I've seen it before. Despite your gulf of differences, you actually have come together. So, you should put the fire out, and then we're going to get you off the island. All right, guys, we've had an absolutely amazing experience. Yeah. Three, yeah. two, one. Yeah. Yes, that's the end of that. <laughs> well done, guys. Well done, everyone. Yeah. Come on, then. Let's go. Let's get off this island. Come on. This has just been the best experience of my life. I had £12,000 on this island. I'm leaving with 6500 I've shared it to the ones that didn't have any money, and the, the way they come up to me after and just hugged me was more than any of that money's worth to me anyway. Take a good look, guys. I'm immensely proud of what I've achieved. For someone like me, who comes from quite a superficial, materialistic background, this was worlds apart, and I am flabbergasted that I've managed to do it. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Cheers. 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 Oh, my God. Oh, I never thought it possible to make friends as closely as I, you know, I believe we have in such a short time. I'd like to think I made some lifetime friends here for sure, yeah. Yeah. Yay, let's get on. 
Returning to civilization, the islanders could enjoy their first proper meal in five weeks. Pineapple. Oh my God. Cheers. To the island. Cheers. Cheers. To the island and all it's given us. Oh my God. It was just an incredible experience. I'm not sure I'd do it again though. <laughs> been there, done that, and hopefully you'll give us a T-shirt. I've eaten too much. <laughs> I left with 16,000 quid. I'm going to give the bulk of it to, um, to pay my daughter's school fees. Still late. <laughs> the islanders survived 35 days without access to basic everyday household <laughs> items, including a mirror. It's not normal in your lifetime to go from one race to another. Like, that's exactly what happened. I'm so black. I'm an actual... I'm, I'm just black now. This is me. So, yeah, like, hair included, cos I normally have straight hair and I'm, like, paler. And I've gone, like, really dark and afro hair. Like, it's just born again. <gasps> no, I look like a completely different woman. So I was 14 stone. Yeah, I was, I was about 14 stone. And I'm down to... Eleven and a half. My wife fancies me. It's just, honestly, it's just quite bizarre. The last time I weighed this was when I was 25 years old. Come on! I left the island with a massive smile on my face and nine and a half thousand pounds. <gasps> oh, my God, my skin. Oh, my God. When I saw myself, I was so disappointed, so, so disappointed. I didn't care about the hair, but to see how bad my skin was was shocking, absolutely shocking. It was about two weeks before it was back to normal or back to the point where I felt comfortable enough to be able to just sort of wash and go. For five weeks, the islanders were also entirely without any contact with family and loved ones. <laughs> I've learned that um, I am stronger than I thought I was. I'm resi more resilient. I I've learned to be, you know, proud of who I am. Oh, my God, you don't know what I've been through, Charles. You know what? I had a brilliant, amazing experience, which I will it'll live with me forever. And I came home five grand richer. What's not to love about that? Hello? Yeah, it's Marco. How are you doing? I'm very well, Mom. It's done. We're off. We're home and dry again. I managed to get £19,000, so... And then that's you getting your car, OK? Oh, Mark, what can you do here for yourself? You might need to fall back on it sometime. Yeah, don't worry about me. Uh, what I've just done, I did for you guys, all right? To be in a position where I can change my mum's life or I can do something good for her. It's just... She hasn't, she hasn't had an easy life. Oh, what an opportunity. There's no way that would have left my mind, you know, it couldn't have. And that's that it was that little string that I was holding on to the whole time. Nineteen thousand pounds, it's life changing, you know? It really is. What a treat. After the harsh living conditions on the island, even the most basic items oh. become a luxury. This is so freaky. Oh, never! Oh, Jesus! <laughs> oh, my goodness! Oh, it's so beautiful and it's huge. Oh, my goodness me! Wow, what a treat! What a privilege. Honest to God, what a privilege. And I do hope that when people look at it, they do look and see you don't have to, at 75, give up on life. Get in there and do it. I we'll never want to leave. <gasps> no sand. Oh, or TV. Beautiful. Stunning. We have a shower! Shampoo, soap, conditioner, running water. But now, it's just so good to smell nice all the time. Um, but it has taught me as well that you don't need to shower every day. Although I, I do, I am showering every day. Clean! Can't believe how tender I am.
Fuck me. This is shit. Ah, the fucking sand flies. Drop it! Did you drop? There it is. The most powerful thing I've seen is that actually, even within a group where there's such differences... How selfish! Listen, stop it. There's always haves and there's always have-nots. Doggy dog, every man for himself, you know? There's space within that to work together and to support each other for the greater and the common good. <laughs> well done, man. Well done. Come on, mate, let's get back. Today's the best day. That is perfect. And really, kindness and friendship is the one currency that you cannot put a price on.